Master Geo at Five Points Festival with Matt Miner and the Sexecutioner from Guar. Hey, how you doing? All right, so how did you guys get involved with Guar? Uh, well, it, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of bong hits in comic books about 30 years ago, and, and I woke up here just now. <laughs> you know, just being involved in American popular culture, growing up in the 60s, and being exposed to, you know, all the golden age Marvel comics, and then next thing you know, I'm drawing, it's my dream to be a comic book artist. We go to comic book conventions, hawking away our ideas and stuff, and to have, like, somebody who's a VIP raise an eyebrow and say, hey, nice work, kid, or get, a, get an award or something like that, well, it was that strength that put me where I am today. I'm so glad to be here. I can't believe I'm on the other side of the table. That's my story. My story is being a, a, a nerdy 16-year-old kid and falling in love with this band and then, you know, as an adult getting into writing comics and deciding, you know what, I need to make Guar comics one of these days because I've loved this band my whole life and, you know, they haven't had comics in 25 years. So, you know, I... Uh, I ended up meeting someone who knew Guar's lawyer, and you know I got the right introductions, and I didn't scare them with my fanboyishness. So they let me uh, they let me write their story with 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 guidance. So I'm co-writing with Guar, and everything's okay. everything's going through, you know Matt McGuire, and he's he's putting it through the band, and and he's also uh, illustrating uh, parts of it with uh, Jonathan Brandon Sawyer. So so yeah. We have his firstborn and his firstborn's firstborn. Oh. <laughs> I've, is that I, I, I've never even met him. I, you know, I didn't know they existed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever get to meet Odorous? Uh, yeah, I mean, when I, as a fan, yes. Not as a, not as a, an adult creator. Um, the first time I met Dave was at an X Cops show, and uh, I was with a friend who was like a really big fan, and I was I was a fan, but he was a really big fan. And back in the early '90s, like you couldn't just look up pictures of them online and go, "Okay, now I know what they look like." So Dave was watching one of the opening bands in the in the crowd, and my friend was like, "Hey, that's odorous." So we went over and talked to him and got him to sign our ticket stubs. And and Dave was like, "Stick around after the show. I'll I'll introduce you to the rest of the guys." And we were like, ah, "You know." Geeky, geeky, nineteen-year-old kids, and uh, so the show ended. And it was freaking amazing because, I mean, it was small, but uh, but but that was good because it was like in a small venue. There weren't that many people, and it was very like intimate and close. And uh, as people were clearing out, I was like, "Well, you know, we better go." I didn't want to impose, and Dave was like, "No, no, they're with us." <laughs> and so. We got to hang out with him a little bit, and that was the first time I met him. I met him a couple other other times after shows and stuff, but uh, but I, you know, I never I never knew him, knew him or anything, you know. That that that's my story about Dave Brocky. I have an embarrassing wealth of information yeah. on Brocky, which, out of due respect, I will. Yeah, he he has the Brocky stories. I will be try to be tight lipped. Is there anything one in particular? <laughs> How is it performing with Well, it's the rush of a lifetime. I mean, you rock star. And for me, you know, I, I got to do all the cool stuff. I got to kill people on stage and fight monsters, get my ass kicked, drink sing blood. a song, drink blood, party <laughs> afterwards, chicks, midgets. <laughs> the whole thing, the whole panorama. How could it not be fun? I mean, it's like it's like everything you love about comics is war, you know, dinosaurs, cyborgs, girls, monsters, aliens, you know, blood spray. I mean, it's everything you love about comics, you know. So I mean, well, that was the roadmap, right? I mean, after our first comic book convention, we said, okay, we get it, comics, horror, science fiction, fantasy, rock and roll. <laughs> Guar. <laughs> That's what appealed to me as a kid who loved horror and loved comic books. Guar was right up, and heavy metal music, Guar was right up my alley. Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, the first time uh, somebody, I got into Guar, somebody handed me their headphones when I was in high school, and he was like, listen to this, and it was Love, Sur Love Surgery. 
and it was like you know the the intro and it it got to the you know see your nipples stripped from you and tossed into my human stew and I was like what the fuck am I listening to and I was like let me borrow this you know <laughs> and uh, yeah I mean ever since then like I've been into them you know been a I've been a fan and uh, you know it's just that the thing that appeals to it appealed to me as a kid who didn't really fit in anywhere else that, you know, that this is a cool thing and they're creating this new thing that do doesn't exist. You know, this new performance art mixed with comics, mixed with heavy metal music, mixed with blood spray. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so could you tell me a little bit about the comic? Uh, yeah, sure. The comic, uh, it involves the, the, the new the current cast of Guar, and uh, they're thrown back into time by Mr. Perfect in order to, so that Mr. Perfect can uh, can uh, absorb Sabor Destructo's DNA into his own. So what you're going to see here is how Guar um, affected a lot of the things that we see now as uh, as you know the things that we accept as history now. So you're going to see how Guar affected, you know, the Revolutionary War, or how Guar affected, you know, uh, the outcome of World War II, or or how they uh, were really responsible for the sinking, of the sinking of the Titanic, that kind of thing. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, it's it it doesn't take itself seriously. Um, you're going to see some guest stars. You're going to see some penguins. Um, you know, it's it's just going to be a lot of fun, and I'm writing it from a perspective. Uh, you know, Matt McGuire and I are kind of crafting this story from the perspective perspective of wanting to bring in readers who may not be familiar with Guar, or may think that you know they're just that heavy metal band that sprays their audience with blood, um, and they're like, oh, I don't like heavy metal music. Well, you don't have to like that in order to really love this comic because it's got dinosaurs. It's got monsters it's got you know time travel it's got all the cool stuff that makes comics awesome and it's beautifully illustrated you know so i think it's going to be a lot of fun you know dynamite comics has been a great publisher for this uh they've really been supporting the book really hard and we're just excited to see it happen uh it comes out june 7th the first issue and i hope people uh you know hit their uh, comic stores and pick it up all right very cool any final words I think I gotta give it to the man over here. Well, it's been good talking with you, but I'm afraid you're gonna have to die. <laughs> I've always been wanted to be killed by God, so. All right. Uh, gosh, I'm, I'm tongue tied. I can't think of a parallel statement. What do you mean? Well, I, I just told him I was gonna kill him, and he says it's always a pleasure. <laughs> We got the axe. Okay. That does it.